I hope you bought a physical Bible. And the only reason you don't have a physical Bible should be because you are a new believer. I use an iPad. But I have a physical Bible that I love. Can I teach you? When you have a cell phone or a device as the only source of your Bible, it's dangerous. Because you see, as, this is, as soon as you, you, you look up, there is a dozen apps that are simultaneously fighting for your attention. Am I right? So you're reading your Bible and God is just about to speak and suddenly somebody pokes you on Facebook. Do, do they still have pokes and pillows? I've, I don't have a profile, so I don't know. Uh, you know, and just about to have an encounter and Instagram tells you, oh, your old college friend just sent you a message. So you stop reading the Bible and you go to listen to your college friend. So the enemy will use distractions on your phone to take you away from the Lord. So every believer must have a physical Bible. Every believer must have a what? A allocated physical Bible. In fact, there is a Bible called Journal Bible. Journal. Okay. So both the sides, there is enough space for you to write notes. So what I do is that every time I open the Bible, I write the date on it. Uh, just small, tiny bit on the corner. Because there are times when God has taken me back to the same page. And then I remember, this is something God had spoken to me three months ago. And already you have forgotten it. And then you write another date beside it. There are some pages that God has taken me there eight to ten times. And you know, the Bible is big. So, so you want to personalize. The word of God is... God. The Holy Bible, if you look on the Bible, is written Holy Bible. The holiness is not in the book. You know, that is why some Christians, they take the Bible and they put it under the pillow. And they're like, you know, in case some monster comes out of the window, you know, I can, the Bible has been, it'll protect me, no demons will, no, no. The devil is not afraid of the book. So if you see it mentioned Holy Bible, it is because the words in it has the power to redeem you. And holiness completely is dependent on the way you rever it. Otherwise, it is just like any other book on your shelf. Many Bibles are dusted. Many Bibles are full of dust. Many Bibles are just left behind. You haven't opened its pages. So it's no more Holy Bible. It's one of those books in your shelf. Holiness is in the way you handle it. What brings holiness to the book is the way you celebrate the book. You know, you know I've, in all my travels, I have lost many things a few years ago. I've lost gadgets. I've lost... Here and there, you know, or oh, sometimes you, you're shuttling through, transiting through many places. You lose things here and there. But nothing scares me more than losing my Bible. Amen. I'm telling you, just because that is my place where I hear God's voice. I don't want to lose it. Even if I lose everything else that I have, that book, you can take everything. Leave me with that book and I'll come back. Amen. Yes, that book is your key of hearing God's voice. There are three versions that I recommend. One is King James Version, but many people find King James Version is very difficult English. So then one of the updated uh, versions of King James Version is a, a, a close translation is called English Standard Version. Now, some people read ESV and still they find it hard. You know, some chapters are very complicated. So at that point, for something more simple, uh, you can go with NLT, New Living Translation. 
but i strongly recommend that you don't read just one version because the bible was not written in english so everybody is trying hard to reach there are sometimes i read a certain verse in in one version and then i read king james version and there are like literally one whole line that they just decided not to use in another version i'm like this is crazy you don't get to you don't get to do that and there are things that are mentioned in esv that you read in nlc and is almost completely different so sometimes i wrestle with like come on i want to stand and you know freak out because that one line can be life changing you know so you have to be passionate about the word of god so what i generally do is i have a king james version uh, which is very complicated so and then on my bible app i use a bible app called tecasta this app what i like about it is that you can underline a certain word putting it on her so abram rose early in the morning took bread and skin of water gave it to hagar putting it on her shoulder along with that child and sent her away and she departed and wandered in the wilderness so that word i like that word so i know there is a revelation there so as soon as it catches my attention i can just highlight one word in yellow can you do you, do you see that okay and and when the water in the skin was gone she put the child under one of the bushes you know this is how i like to read the word i pick up on words pick up on lines pick up on the details then she went and sat down opposite him you see you can and 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 what i also like is you can go in and uh, there is an option for you to to write notes where is it see right here so each verse you can put a note there you know let me show you this as well since we are on it there is an option on this to have two sides so when you flip it you can have esv on your left nlt on your right so what i do is see as you read this it keeps moving by your side Okay so what I do is I read the bible in king james and I read one verse then I read the same verse in esv then I read the same verse in nlt so I get a full understanding of the scripture uh, this app is called tecarta so be a passionate student of the word of god last week a young girl about 17 years old she said she, can you i just don't have the the interest to read the bible just like my parents do so i find it hard to read so many chapters and and i told her this i said it is not about how long you deep you read what did i say yeah. it's about how deep you read you know imagine somebody saying oh today it is a pleasure reading the book of hebrews like wait a minute you read the whole book of hebrews in one day man there are times when i have been stuck with one verse for five days just can't move because every time i read it the holy spirit started speaking and speaking and speaking five verses i've struggled to finish the book of matthew chapter 1 it took me more than one week to cross over to chapter 2 so when i hear people saying that you know i finished the entire book in one day i'm like what is this bible reading competition and you know how you do it you have to digest it as you read it what did i say digest it you got to understand the author who wrote the book is inside you so every time you read you have to ask him tell me about this verse and there are times god will show you videos of what happened he will give you information that you don't see and he will put it into your spirit because he's inside you so don't expect him to speak on in your ears because he's inside you 
Some people are waiting. Hello, Sam, how are you? No, that's not how God speaks. He's not outside, he's inside. So he speaks to your conscience. So as you read that, so Abraham got up early. Now, this is not what I'm preaching, but I'm just saying. So Abraham got up early the next morning. So for me, immediately I start thinking, wow, I got a key there. The key is lifestyle. Lifestyle. Abraham had a lifestyle of waking up early in the morning. And he did this. He prepared food and container of water. So break it down. See it. Read it. Understand it. Reread it. Meditate on it. So instead of you going on Facebook and bragging that you finished reading 10 chapters today, I feel so good. Instead, you read few verses. I wish you get stuck in a verse. Did you hear that? Listen, this is how this is how I would do it. So I'm reading a verse and as I'm reading, I'm also monitoring the spirit of God who's talking and there will be one part where I feel like, hmm, there's more there. That verse, don't jump to the next verse. Did you get what I'm saying? As you're reading, there will be one verse that will that will not that will tell you that oh this is interesting if you know it is interesting how dare you go to the next verse stay on that verse stay on that verse and reread it and then you're like i feel this verse is interesting i'm reading it and i don't get anything that means your spirit is not connected with the spirit of god so then you have to check am i is my spirit silent and then you wait on the lord take two minutes sing a song sing a song nobody is there nobody will know if you can sing or not just sing and then read it again the more your spirit becomes silent the more you are able to receive from the spirit of god how many of you know our god is a talking god so when you feel like this verse is interesting don't you dare go to the next verse stay on it and say lord why is this verse bothering me what are you saying what are you speaking read it read it it's okay you, we have a long many many years to live on this earth don't rush reading the word yeah. you know you know sometimes people say you know but you need the whole bible the whole bible we need the whole bible what they don't understand is the god who wrote genesis is the god who wrote revelation please don't limit god god can listen trust me when i tell you this okay may you experience this god can speak to you from genesis the same thing he can speak to you from the book of psalms and the same information he can speak to you from proverbs and the same information he can speak to you matthew and the same information is he can speak to you from the book of revelation so you're like oh i was supposed to read that chapter but i ended up reading this chapter so now i am going to have a bad day no no don't put god in a box don't put god in a box the reverence at which you head toward reading that chapter is going to make god appear in that chapter so you can get correction in genesis you can get a rebuke in psalms and you can get a correction in proverbs you can get a correction in matthew and you can get the correction in revelation so if today god wants to correct you he can correct you in any chapter so it's not about which chapter you read it is at the reverence at which you go into the chapter may you read the bible differently that is why you have to be possessive about your bible you have to be what if your house is on fire and they tell you you can run in and grab one thing don't run to grab your passport no you can get a new passport but grab the bible because that bible is now part of your journey yeah but brother i can get a new bible too yes but this physical bible is where god was giving you encounters and leading you and encountering you so don't switch it to another bible be attached to it 
and start celebrating God. Have beautiful colored pens. You know, and when something God speaks, put it in yellow. When God rebukes, put it in red. You know, when God speaks a blessing, put it in green. When it is a good information, put it in blue. You know, color code what you read the Bible. Find your own Bible where you meet God in your Bible. You know, sometimes when certain things begin to stir you up, it is not even stirring you up because it is cool. When you're reading your word and if you feel something is igniting a fire inside you, it's not igniting a fire because it is cool. Hear me. Because what is cool to me may not be cool to you. What excites me may not excite you. So if something in the Bible is exciting you, it is because it is an invitation from the Holy Spirit. I said what? It is an invitation from the Holy Spirit into that experience. God is inviting you into that verse. God is inviting you. I believe the Lord wants us to go deeper into the things of God. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and share with your friends. Have a great day.